Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Glen Oaks Community College. I'm Dr. Ren Hartung. For this video, I'm going to talk about the renin aldosterone system, also known as the RAS system. Um, short form for it usually is written out as R-A-A-S or just R-A-S. And if, if it's R-A-S, um, that's kind of a common usage. Instead of renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, it's just renin-aldosterone system. So it's a shortened form of the longer name. Both of them are acceptable generally. Um, this is a system that helps to maintain blood pressure. And you could argue it also helps to maintain water and electrolyte balance. To start off with, I like to remind myself by drawing an image of a liver. The liver, of course, is a large organ in your upper right abdomen and the liver is considered part of the digestive system but it's also a gland it makes um, this particular hormone or pre-hormone called angiotensinogen angiotensinogen again angiotensinogen is a pre-hormone um, so it's not an active hormone yet so again liver makes angiotensinogen. That angiotensinogen then is floating around in your bloodstream. It's always there. The liver is keeping it at normal levels or healthy levels. Um, and you could think of angiotensinogen being ready in case it's needed. Here's when it's needed. Um, and I'm going to draw another organ. Not a particularly good drawing. Um, but that's a kidney. Um, if the kidneys detect if they detect a drop in blood pressure, they will release this enzyme called renin. The enzyme renin. And the way I'm drawing this, by the way, is as a, like a biochemistry equation or a chemical equation. Um, these are enzymatically um, converted chemicals. Um, so getting back to renin, renin is an enzyme that catalyzes the reaction of angiotensinogen, turning it into angiotensin 1. Um, and real quick, back to the kidney, I said if the kidneys detect low blood pressure, keep in mind, your kidneys, of course, make urine. They're making that urine in order to get rid of extra water, extra salts, and to get rid of nitrogenous waste, and that way they're cleaning the blood. So the kidneys are performing a vital function in terms of keeping your blood clean, helping to keep your water and electrolyte balance right, and also helping to keep your acidity right, your pH balance. The kidneys need a certain amount of blood pressure to be able to do that job of producing the urine and doing these important things. Um, but the kidneys are also sensitive to if the blood pressure gets too high. That could damage the kidneys at the microscopic level. So the kidneys are very sensitive to blood pressure. So it makes sense that they might be at least one of the organs involved with helping to maintain blood pressure homeostasis. Okay, so back here, the kidneys make renin in response to low blood pressure. Renin converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. I'll pick it up from there on my next line. On your paper, you could just keep going in a straight line if you want. Angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is going to be converted into um, angiotensin 2. by an enzyme that's found mostly in the lungs. It's found other places, but it's mostly found in the microvasculature of the lungs. So there's my lungs. The lungs contain, it's called ACE. And ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. Great name, isn't it? I love it when 
when we name things for exactly what they do. So angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 with the help of this enzyme that catalyzes that reaction. Um, you might also have heard of um, ACE before. Um, again, the lungs contain ACE. Um, you may have heard of drugs called ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors are a class or a category, a broader category of different drugs that inhibit this enzyme. And you'll see that the effects of angiotensin 1 are to bring blood pressure up. So if you inhibited this enzyme, you would help to keep blood pressure lower. Okay, let's talk about what all of this is going to lead to, keeping in mind that the trigger for this, the stimulus for this, was this decrease in blood pressure. Let's talk about the effects of angiotensin 2. Whoops. I don't want to rewrite angiotensin 2. What I want to do is write effects. Um, I'll start with the brain. And I'm going simple, so I'm just putting brain on here. I might speak about them a little bit of detail. Um, in the brain, a couple of things are caused to happen. One of them is um, activate, activation of thirst. And the other one is um, ADH release. And let me give you a little bit, just a little bit of detail here. Specifically in the brain, these effects are on the hypothalamus. Um, the thirst center is in the hypothalamus. And angiotensin II activates that thirst center, and then the person feels thirsty. If you feel thirsty, you're likely to drink more water. If you drink more water, that's going to lead to an increase in blood volume. With an increase of blood volume, you're going to see an increase in blood pressure. So bringing the blood pressure that was lower to back towards normal. ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin. I just wanted to leave a little side note. Um, antidiuretic hormone is synthesized by the hypothalamus, but it's actually released by the posterior pituitary gland. This is a hormone that does exactly what its name says. ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Diuretic is something that causes a person to have greater urine volume because more water is going into the urine. This hormone does the opposite of that. It's anti-diuretic. So it tells the kidneys, ADH tells the kidneys to retain more water. So there will then be more water in the bloodstream. Again, increasing blood volume, increasing blood pressure. Next one, we'll talk about the adrenal glands. For the adrenal glands, the... Um, Angiotensin II stimulates aldosterone release. Aldosterone is a hormone that goes back to the kidneys and tells the kidneys to retain more sodium. When you retain more sodium, you will retain more water because sodium is um, very osmotically active. It really attracts water. So by retaining more sodium, we're going to retain more water. So that's the effect on the adrenal glands. The last effect I'll talk about is um, vasoconstriction. And for the mostly, um, this is affecting the uh, arterioles. Vasoconstriction should make sense to you, but blood, of course, is moving through these tubes of the blood vessels. If you constrict those tubes, then the heart has to push harder. You could think of it that way. The blood pressure is going to go up. So every one of these um, effects of angiotensin II is going to counter the initial stimulus, which was a decrease in blood pressure. So again, these are trying to help bring blood pressure back up keeping blood pressure in homeostasis or within its homeostatic range. So that's the entire renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Um, other things to broadly think of as you go through this, memorizing the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, it's a great way to, um, to get especially beginning students to start to understand that the entire human body 
works as a whole. All of these body systems all work together. This is a perfect example because we've got the liver, which is representing digestive system. We've got the kidneys, which of course represents the renal system. We've got the lungs representing respiratory system. Um, we've got the brain representing the nervous system, adrenal glands, and also the liver in this case because it's making a hormone. We've got the endocrine system involved, and of course we've got a hormone, so endocrine system involvement. Um, and the list probably could go on if I wanted to keep going, but the basic gist of it is we've got multiple systems here all working together, in this case to help with um, blood pressure homeostasis. So they all work together. Um, I think that's all. Um, I usually try to give a quiz. Here's the quiz. Are you ready? Go and write out the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system including at the end all of the effects and what the major reason is that the body is doing this and um, then also describe how this renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system can help us understand how the human body works as a whole. Um, that's what I would do and it might take you a few pieces of blank paper to be able to get to the point where you can write this entire system out all on your own and explain the things around it. But that's the point you should get to because then any multiple choice questions revolving around any part of this, you'll be able to get them. And of course, if your instructor like me has describing and writing out this system as a potential essay question, then you'll be able to crush that question too and get good points. More importantly, you'll understand it and you'll have a better understanding of the human body. So go and do that. Learn it. Um, if you want to have more fun, go ahead and write it out in the comments. Write down your interpretation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system in the comments. And um, as I see them come up, I'll give you a grade from uh, zero points to ten points telling you how you did and give you some critique. As always, if you have other comments or if you have questions, please leave them down below. And thank you once again for watching.